Welcome back, MTG Joe here, and today we are going to be testing out uh, some historic angels. Uh, this time it is a Abzan version, so green, black, white, and it's basically, um, so the credit to the deck goes to Sandstorm846 on Twitter. Uh, this individual got number one mythic this month at uh, some juncture with the deck, um, and really it is the kind of collected company angels deck, which has been quite popular on the myth or in historic in general, um, but they are splashing Vito Thorn of Dusk Rose. Um, so basically, the deck itself is a life gain deck, and when you gain life, Vito drains your opponent of that much life. Vito can also give all your creatures lifelink and kind of combo kill that way there. So really, the core of the deck is built around a couple cards. You have Bishop of the Wings, which gains you four life for every time an angel comes into play. You have Righteous Valkyrie, which gains you life equal to creatures that are clerics or angels' toughness. Um, and then if you have seven or more starting life, so 27 or more life, all your creatures get plus two, two. And then with Resplendent Angel, uh, if you gain five or more life each turn, you get a four, four. Um, so pairing it up, you want to gain a lot of life with your deck and then uh, either kill them with big attackers, a big board of angels, or with the veto kind of drain your opponent out. Um, we are pairing this with Collected Company, um, a very powerful instant, and basically this gives us card selection and card advantage to pull uh, out of the top six cards, any of the creatures you see here into play. Um, and then we're kind of piecing it together. Uh, Soul Warden is a similar life gain effect when creatures enter the battlefield. Uh, this version is only playing two Speaker of the Heavens, so something we want to see. Uh, similar with the 27 Life Clause, uh, you can create 4-4 four, four Angels. Uh, Youthful Valkyrie and Angel of Vital Vitality kind of fill out the angel curve. This one gets bigger with more angels. This one gains you one extra life each time. <clears throat> and then one Skyclave is removal in the main. You got three in the side. And then a Johnny Strength of the Pride. This is a very powerful Planeswalker, particularly in this deck here. Um, so it can gain you life. It can create uh, Johnny Pride Mate tokens that get bigger over time. But really, it breaks bar uh, board stalls. If you're at 35 or more life, a Johnny just is a one-sided board wipe, so you can just attack in. Um, the one thing I'm curious with this mana base, so we have six black sources to cast Veto outside. Um, it's really this inclusion of the forest is something we want to see if that comes back. Um, generally in these decks, you want everything to be producing white mana, um, but we have three Yasharns in the sideboard for the sacrifice matchups. Um, so this is something we're going to see uh, if it comes back to bite us. The Yasharn can fetch each of these. On the sideboard, you have an authority of the consoles versus haste, goblins, um, just a way to kind of slow down your opponent. Rest in peace versus graveyard decks. Uh, Thalia and Redain will come in typically against control to slow down your opponents. Uh, three Skyclave as removal. The Yasharns, like I mentioned, for the sacrifice matchup primarily. Um, and then the uh, Sandstorm had a third of Johnny. Uh, Cosmo Elixir is something I want to try out. So. These angel decks usually have a hard time against heavy board wipe decks. Um, so the Cosmo Elixir, it's a way for us to get an extra card draw every turn, especially against slower control decks. We're going to oftentimes be over the 20 life total. Um, so this is a way to kind of get some card advantage. So this is something I want to try out. And then Lyra, Dawnbringer, just add, uh, for the aggressive matchups, stuff like Gruul, uh, you can often just get bigger with Lyra um, than what they have. It also uh, She also gives all our angels a lifelink. So we were, so we dropped a couple spots. We are at top 400, Mythic to start. Um, so we'll take it to the ladder, see how it goes. Vito Angels. Vito is the card that no matter whenever I post a life gain deck or a clerics deck, is always a question about what about Vito? So let's see how Vito plays out. Isolicaria. Fortunately, opponents on the play. So this is one of the downsides. The mana's a little rough. I think this hand's still worth keeping. We have two draws for an untapped blind. We only have like two of the isolated chapels. Okay, they, they're on elves. So really want an untapped line here. Untapped planes would be great for us. Just helps us curve out. Um, Elves is going to be a race, I think, no matter what. Lands, lands. 
Really need a land here. Okay, so that's obviously collected company. We missed the land here. I'm gonna concede and not give them more information of what we're on. Um, authority comes in, Lyra and the Skyclaves. Um, Speaker of the Heavens isn't gonna attack in that much. The Flyers are generally pretty good. Uh, three cuts. So in this matchup here, like we want to kind of hide what we have. Um, we're unlikely to win that game. They're going to collect the company. They're going to snowball. We missed our line drops. We're just not going to cascade in the same manner. Um, so I'm cutting the Angel Vitalities. They're kind of our weakest angels in this case. Um, the Ajani's can clear the board. Lyra gets really big and going over the top of Flyers is very good. Um, there is... I think I want to try the Veto in this game. We're not going to be able to attack as frequent. So let's give it a shot. By doing this, the opponent doesn't know what we're on. Angels typically isn't in Abzan colors. So this way they're not going to bring in something like Noxious Revival. Okay, this hand is a keep. Again, we do need to hit one more land to make this hand kind of go off, but... We have two draws at that. 24 lands in the deck. Opponent did mulligan to five. Their average converted mana cost is lower. Need a mana here. Come on. Well, looks like magic is playing us today. The double war masters a bit annoying. Okay, so I think I want to keep this for the lords at this point. Because if I can Coco this turn, I could potentially hit one of our lords. If we get a black source, Vito starts going off. Really just need lions here. Their deck can deal a lot of damage in one shot. Um, the soul wardens are a nice effect here. Yeah, so this is something we're gonna try to get rid of now. Okay, so this is interesting. I could collect a company, which I think we do. Just go huge here. This way we basically have lethal on them next turn. Okay, so the hands kind of came together here. They don't have a quite enough to go off even with multiple lords. I can block in a way that should keep me alive. I'm at 68 life. Should be good here. Opponent did multi five. We stumbled a bit on lions. Um, I think we're just running it back. Maybe trim a veto here. Then go. So the Redain is interesting with the shield, but they often have lords, so it makes it less impactful, plus they have the pump. 
Um, let's just try the veto. We came here to play vetoes. Soul Warden is really impactful in this matchup, just gaining life off each time your opponent plays a, a creature. So we'll hopefully not get mana screwed this game. This matchup feels like either side's just gonna snowball. I think we keep this. We have a few draws. Bishop into Valkyries, like our best kind of play. Drawing a line there kind of sucks. But we already have our plays telegraphed for turn two and three. Oh, looks like this game we're drawing all our lines. Likely see the Noxious Grasp here. Yeah. This is where it gets a tad scary. They can Coco here, three, four, five, six, seven, so they can activate the War Master's ability with the land. Need to hit a collected company here or a Lyra. Yeah, it's basically free mana. Yeah, they're snowballing this game. These are. This is basically two mana, draw one, get a 2 2. back from that that's turn four all right so like our hand's not bad there but play draw being a, a notable thing there elves is tough because like if we can't sweep the board and we did like we need turn one um Soul Warden, Chingantha. Okay, sounds good. I'm gonna put away the Temple Garden here. So Chingantha's burn or sacrifice typically could be engine combo. More often than not, it's just sacrifice, which is a tough matchup. At times, we need the authorities. Them having claim can be a bit of a problem. Yeah, sacrifice. Interesting. Go bishop here into the righteous. This might be that Jund control deck, yeah. So if they're heavy on removal, could be a problem. They put on my Righteous here. Not doing well with this deck today. This is kind of my qualms with the Angel deck, and I've experienced it. You win, mer like, by miles, but oftentimes you just kind of run at a card advantage. Chevelle is probably going to be an issue. Surprised they attack there. Looks like we're on the all lands plan. This 
So this is the part where we just never draw anything good. Let's see what we got here, but we're basically dead at this point. I should have held the the block mana. Opponents had three removal spells and Chevelle to gain six life thus far, get two extra cards, so they're net neutral on cards. And like we don't really want to pump here. Okay, well now we'll pump. They gave us an opening. So the chariot, so they play the troll land, like destroy a land. You get a 4-4, four, four, and then they usually copy that with Eska's chariot. Not too worried about ooze here. Chariot's 4 mana. I think we're just racing in the sky. Having something die turns on their fatal push, which can get rid of my resplendent angel. I'm getting five life per turn, so it's pretty much net, net, yeah, net neutral. I think we're just doing this again. Keeping this back as a blocker this turn. So they need a removal spell. They're dead on board. So we might, you know what, I should have attacked there. Mind you, they can gain a life, so it's not lethal yet. Okay, so Tome. They're digging for removal here. Okay, so we might, Resplendent might have snuck this out for us. So this is a matchup where Cosmos Elixir can be a decent inclusion. Thalia is kind of interesting because they do have a lot of creatures, so Thalia seems worse. Um, 4, 6, 10, 11... Oh, you know, I, I sh nah, I'm not even going to block because if one of these dies, it triggers revolt. They can take it out. Yeah. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so I do want Cosmos Elixir. Thalia is interesting. I think we trim a veto. These angels don't do much, so we'll trim these. Do you want Redain? And I think... I think I just want some Skyclave Apparitions. Play maybe one Thalia. I think we... Do I want a second Thalia? Probably not. Let's run it like this. I can't recall when I saw this list if they play Cage. I still think we, because we have Skyclave, it can eat a Cage. That's going to be a no for me. Okay, keep this hand. Okay. 
Vito is the worst card in this hand. At least with our curve. So they probably take Resplendent here. Splendid being the best card in the hand, it could kind of just like that last game snowball. So we'll shock in here so that way I can play this on green. Coco is a great draw there. No attacks. So they likely like overboarded with removal here. We might be seeing stuff like extinction event. I think on the draw, I'm gonna bring in all four Skyclaves. Ah. Jesus. This hand's not doing wonders. Needed that Coco. They always have the turn two Chevelle. I think we just go to sideboard if we don't. Something. So they hit us for one. Another Righteous would be nice. They could just play Jengantha. They're kind of forced into killing Righteous Valkyrie here. Just the upside's huge. Yeah. Pulse is also an annoying card. Gain six life here. Yeah, we need the Skyclaves. Even Thalia, like they have a lot of one for one. So at the beginning of keep stars, so you remove all of them. If you do exile each non land permanent with less than or equal to. Okay, that's something. Honestly, just think we're main phasing this. See what we get, because if I can exile Saruf, can also turn on the Righteous Valkyrie or with Resplendent. Um, so definitely Righteous, Redain turns on my 27 life, but I think I want Skyclave here, um, and I think we're getting rid of Saruf. We are unfortunately one life off. Hopefully dodge a turn of removal here. I think we're blocking. Okay, so they shock. Casual. Yeah, we're dead here. Tybalt's gonna grind us up. Um, I 
think we're getting rid of Vito here. They showed Stomp, so Speaker becomes a lot less useful. It's also like pretty unlikely with Speaker that we're going to be able to untap with it. It can't attack. Hopefully this is a game where they don't have turn 2 Shovel. Can we stop mulliganing against the Thoughtseize deck? It would be great. Um, I'm going to keep this hand. I'm probably putting a Johnny away. Coco just has the biggest upside. It's been frustrating. We draw five lands or one land. Give me lands, just running lands, three turns of lands. They kept seven, so I just assume everything I have is dead. Thought sees me or push me, push me. Just play another game. We're gonna fall too far behind, missing lines. Super frustrating. Super frustrating. This has kind of been my experience with Angels thus far. This is the third time I've played it on stream, different takes on the deck. Like you do cool things, but you're just, as soon as your opponent interacts with you, a sweeper kind of takes you out. Let's try to get back up there in rank. Alluris is likely Auras. Let's keep this. Oh, Arcanist. Well, I'm playing Spike Field tapped. Bodes pretty well for us at least. It's one less removal. Is this Thought Seize? So Johnny's inherently the most powerful card in the hand. They might try to throw off my curve. So off the bat, we're going to bring in Rest in Peace in this matchup. Thalia is also pretty decent at slowing them down. Cosmos Elixir again. They're likely going to have removal here, so I think taking the trade's reasonable. I don't want to give them the option to start getting this filled up. If we can dodge. Removal, or a discard. We're doing okay. This version's playing Bowmat Curry, which is interesting. Already have 14. Alaris to hand. Okay, well, that's nice insulation. So I'm playing this out. Shocking now, so it's less likely that we have Coco. We probably will main phase Coco anyways, so it probably doesn't make too much of a difference. Yep. 
Cheryl McCoco. Um, Vitality Angel. Get this nice and big. No life gain's a little annoying there, but if we can hit it off this, then we're in a pretty good spot. Here, like, they kind of have to answer. Yeah. It's going to be hard for them to answer all three. They have a lot of spot removal. Um, so in this matchup, Authority, rest in peace. Huh. This is actually an interesting kind of board plan. I don't think we need a... Th uh, I think on the play we play Authority. Redain for the shield is actually pretty good. It slows them down quite a bit. Same with Thalia. Can get rid of these Angel of Vitalities, I think. Bring in Skyclave Apparitions. One cut. Um, it's probably one of our three drops. Maybe a Skyclave. Run it like this. I guess maybe Cosmos Elixir over a Johnny's better. We can usually keep our life total pretty high, but there looks to be a little bit more aggressive of a version. Okay, this hand's great. Just need a couple lands, but we have early interaction. We have a lot of redundancy for Thoughtseize. Okay, so they're just like Rakdos aggro. Easy no block here. Yep. If they go spike field and fatal push, it's kind of feel bad, but they were going to do this anyways. Okay, no fatal push. Easy no block here. Um, okay, so they they likely have something here. The question is, do I want a youthful? I think this is a better line. I guess I should have attacked first. Gave up one point of damage. Not too worried about this knight until it starts getting bigger. Okay, Crox is interesting. I think we're discarding the land here. Village rights. Okay, so they're less all in on the graveyard than the traditional list. Kind of rejuices them up. This does get one bigger now. There are four cards in the grave. Oh, I screwed up. I lost a point of damage here. That was a misplay. I think we're pretty far behind. And this is where like Cosmos Elixir would be pretty good. I'm just gonna take the damage here. I guess at this point I should probably keep Soul Warden back. Second Crocs is annoying. We are banking on this Skyclave. Another Village Rates. Oh my god. 
Two removal spells, two Croxes, two Village Rites, and the Fabled Passage. They got rid of our answer to Croxa now. I think we are probably Dunzos. They're going to Croxa anyways. Let's just play out the land. This starts getting large now, too. Should have probably just attacked last turn with this. Their play is going to be Croxa anyways. Okay, so I need a Collected Company. I need a... S and a Johnny's not bad. Resplendent doesn't gain me enough life. Rest in peace is too late. That's interesting. Just gonna do removal this turn. Thought for sure it's a Croxa turn. Spark Harvest. No, just Bedevil. Alrighty. Okay, so I think we definitely want the other Skyclave, and I do want the Elixir. Thalia is largely unnecessary, I think, in this match. The thing with Thalia, like, it slightly inconveniences them, but really they showed Spike Field Hazard, they have Spark Harvest, they have enough creatures as well. Angel Control, two lands. In the next three draws. Getting the graveyard under control is also useful. This shuts off. Um... Okay, come on. Give me a land. Give me a land. Don't do me like this deck. Don't do me like this deck. Yeah. Oh, come on! It's going to be one of those days. Yeah, I think it matters. At... Village rights. Ah, uh, come on, you s freaking deck. Oh, come on. This is super annoying. Stredhorde's gonna solo us. Once again, angels are not my friend. Um, congrats to, to the guy that got top one with it. Um, there's too much variability with this deck, I think. You just you don't have the card advantage needed, I think, to be effective. Um, but try it out. See what you think.